Hey, I'm Liam and today I want to save you some money. I want to help you out massively because I made a lot of mistakes early on in my filmmaking career as when I was getting my first camera, first lenses, all that sort of stuff. I could have saved heaps of coin and got exactly the right thing for what I needed. The smallest, easiest to deal with, cheapest possible setup. That's what I'm going to tell you about today. So stick with me, it's going to be rad. I've constantly been trying to figure out through my career what's the smallest, most powerful camera setup that I can possibly have. So this is my setup. This has taken years to figure out what the best parts to get are, but this is what I use for micro ENG, run and gun stuff, when I can't take out my Sony FS7 because it's too big, too bulky, this is what I use. If you're wondering why do I need this sort of rig, maybe you're just starting out, you need to get the most versatile thing that you can possibly have so that you can just start shooting. If you're like a video journalist and you're constantly traveling, this is awesome because it can all fit in a backpack. And I refer to this a lot as a micro ENG rig. And what that means to me is the smallest possible setup with the longest range, audio that you need, lighting you need. And yeah, as I said, if you're getting started out, everything I tell you today is the perfect amount of things for the cheapest amount possible and just get out there and start shooting some good stuff. So this is all stuff I wish I knew when I was getting started out and I'm gonna tell you today because it's super helpful. Let's get started. First things first, let's start with the absolute base of the rig and that is the camera. This is a Sony a6500 and I cannot say enough good things about this camera. This is an absolute weapon. It's my cheapest camera and it is also the camera that has got the most work. I have a Sony FS7, as I've said before, that's what we're filming on today, which I absolutely adore. I think it's an awesome camera, but this camera, the reason why I use it the most is it's compact, it's light. I can run around with this all day and I'm a firm believer in the best camera is the camera you have on you. This is always on me, so this is a good camera. Two things that I think are the most important about this camera is it has inbuilt stabilization. So when I first started off using DSLRs and all that sort of stuff, they were super shaky, you know, super shaky, especially the mirrorless ones. Uh, super shaky and like it, when you're handheld, like you just couldn't go handheld. It was impossible. So you'd need to rig it up with a huge shoulder rig. And I hate that because it's like, if you've got a small camera, you don't want to have a like huge shoulder rig and all that sort of stuff because it kind of defies the point of having a small camera. And it also adds extra cost to it. So this is good. Internal stabilization. I can hold it. I can handhold it and it's nice and smooth. I have no issues with that. The other reason I like this is it's got S and Q mode, which the A7S's do not have at the moment. Um, it's the end of 2017 now. I hope they bring that out in 2018. Uh, that would be great. And what S and Q mode is, uh, is if you record something in S and Q mode, say 50 frames a second, it will play it back on a 25 frame per second timeline in slow motion. So that's like a new thing. Cameras like the FS7 have had that for a while, but this is a new thing in these cameras, which is awesome. So if you record something in slow motion and you give it to an editor, they will see it as a slow motion file. Whereas before on an A7S or something like that, they would see it as regular time and they would have to slow that down in post themselves. And the other good thing about this is it's 4K. So say you're a video journalist, it's really hard to uh, put your camera on a tripod, frame up yourself perfectly, and then record it as well and all that sort of stuff. So if you shoot your stand-ups in 4K, it's really good because you can just crop into the right framing that you want. So shoot a bit wider than you usually would, crop in, all good. 4K is great. Uh, the rolling shutter on 4K is a bit shitty on this camera, so I wouldn't use 4K for motion. So anything that's moving, I would just go 1080, which you're probably gonna wanna do anyway to save on space, on data. The other thing I love about it is it's got a viewfinder. So electronic viewfinder, really good. So I will constantly be using the camera like that because it gives you three points of control as well. So one, two, and your eye. 
So that just means it's so much more stable. In sunlight, you're not gonna be using an LCD screen at the back because you can barely see it. So this really helps you. If you can use a viewfinder, always use a viewfinder because you actually think about the shot that you're getting, you're immersed in it, you're focused on everything that's happening in the shot. Another good thing about this A6500 is it's kind of like a mini A7S uh, in the way that it's really good in low light. I've used this at pretty high ISOs before and I've still found it clean. The batteries are so small. You know, you can get, I reckon like two hours shooting out of a battery, which I think is pretty good. You know, hour to two hours is good. I wish they held more charge, I really do, but they don't. So that's the camera, I love that camera. I think it's really good, really versatile. There's heaps of YouTube videos on how to set it up perfectly. I won't get into that. I won't get into color schemes, picture profiles, all that sort of stuff. I can do that in another video if you really wanna hear it. Next thing. This is my lens setup. Now this is the most important thing, I think. If you get a good lens when you start out, a versatile lens when you start out, this will last you the span of your career. Do not skimp on the lens. Do not do it. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's these two elements. So I'm talking about a speed booster and a Sigma 24 to 105. This lens is great for run and gun. The Canon 24 to 105 was a staple amongst C300 shooters uh, as an everyday lens, something that you'd go out in the field and you'd just have on you at all times. The range is the same. It has internal stabilization on the lens as well, which is awesome. On the front of my lens, I have a very ND filter. This is like sunglasses for your camera, right? So you can see as I'm doing that, it adjusts the amount of light that it's letting through, which is awesome. So this is so crucial. If you're out in the sun, uh, use it. If you're inside, you probably won't need to use it. So that just goes on the front of your lens there. Do not do video without a very ND. It's so crucial. So the next thing is a speed booster. If you don't know what a speed booster is, see that there, it's like a magnifying glass for your lens. So what it does is, this Sigma is a full frame lens. This Sony is a crop sensor. Uh, it's a bit smaller than a full frame lens or a full frame camera. So what it does is it gets this full frame lens and it projects it onto a crop sensor using that magnifying glass sort of thing. So it only works with crop sensors and it only works with mirrorless cameras. It turns my 24 end of this lens, turns it into like, I think it's like 18 to 70 something, which is awesome. Like that's such a good range. It's good enough to get wide. If you're out shooting like a building or something like that, that's nice and wide, you'll get that in. If you're trying to shoot an interview, you can go into like the long end and that's pretty good for like a, an interview, like a nice tight framed up interview. Awesome. The, the speed booster I have is a Velo lens accelerator. I rate it, I think it's good. It doesn't work with the autofocus, but to me, for a run and gun situation, you're probably not gonna be using autofocus. If you are, you'll be waiting for the camera. Sony have an 18 to 105. That's an F4. With the speed booster, this lens is F2.8. I think that extra stop of light is really crucial because you're constantly searching for light in a run and gun situation. You'll be in and out of buildings, all that sort of stuff. So I'll take that stop of light over a little bit more range. And the other thing that I don't like about that Sony 18 to 105 is the focus ring on it. The focus is really hard to nail. It's really hard because it's electronic focus. So it's not a constant, it changes. It changes depending on how fast you turn the ring. It's just not good for run and gun situations. It's not good at all. Um, so this is good. Love this lens. F2.8 on a, on a speed booster, really good. So another crucial part of this rig, it's so simple and it's so cheap. Uh, it is this Rycote cold shoe adapter. This thing is awesome. And what it means is it turns your hot shoe on the camera, so that little guy there, turns it basically into like two or three cold shoes. So it means you can put a lot more hot shoe, cold shoe accessories on there. This is another great, great product by Aperture. It is the Aperture ALM9. It's so good, it's such a powerful little light. As you can see there, you can dim it 
it comes with gels, it comes with a little case, it comes with a cold shoe adapter. Get a few of these because they're so cheap. Just chuck them in your bag. They're like the size of a credit card. You can have as many as you want in there and you can just constantly like, just take them out, use them. It's so good. Audio, audio. Ah, oh, it's so crucial. I can't swear by this enough. Audio is such an important part of anything because if you're doing a doco or something like that, you may not always see a person on screen, but you will always hear a person. So good audio is crucial. Do not skimp on these. These will last for a long time. And the reason why you need one of these Sony ones with this is because it's got headphone monitoring. The A6500 does not have headphone monitoring. That is the one problem with this camera. I don't know why they did that, maybe to keep it compact or maybe because they didn't want to like break into the A7S market, which is double the price. I don't know. But anyway, so I'll put my cold shoot adapter on the top of this A6500 there, plug it in there into the microphone and then I'll get my headphones, chuck them into the headphone socket up the top here. And that means you can roll around with your headphones with that recording audio. It's good, you can monitor it. Uh, you can also visually monitor it on the screen here, which I think is crucial. A lot of people complain about not being able to monitor audio on the A6500, but with this you can, which is really good. When I'm not following someone like a journalist or when I need like NAT sound or something like that, I'll plug in like a Rode video mic or something like that. Once again, fits on the cold shoe, plug it straight into the side there. And uh, what I've done with this is my C3 button here. When I hit that, it brings up audio monitoring. I can turn it down and up with that. And that is such a good thing. That's such a good little, little hack to this camera that I found out. So this is the rig. I would love to know what you think. Let me know, add me on Instagram, send me photos of your dogs, go out there and shoot some awesome stuff. All right, thanks.